Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is day 95. My goodness, where does the time go? Day 95 and it is June the 6th, 2017. Tuesday. <clears throat> well, well, well. Got a couple things to talk about tonight. I'm um, uh, going to talk a little, just very quickly one thing on Seth Rich. We're going to talk about Reality Winner, who I'm sure all of you have heard of. And uh, of course we're going to talk a little bit about something I mentioned uh, in the previous video, follow up on the lawsuit with uh, Dennis Montgomery. <clears throat> because now Circa News has got the story and Sarah Carter is hot on it. And uh, so I'm going to give you some information on that. But first, uh, just one real quick note on Seth Rich. Uh, there was a gentleman who called Brad Bauman on the phone. And uh, two things came out of that conversation that I found very interesting. Uh, he states that the FBI has never had Seth Rich's computer and that the DC Metro Police did have Seth Rich's computer but they returned it to the family shortly after uh, looking at that computer they gave it back to the family so it appears that Seth Rich's laptop that everybody is looking for according to Mr. Brad Bauman their PR representative uh, it appears Mr. Bauman is stating that Mr. and Mrs. Rich have Seth's laptop computer that everybody is looking for. That's very interesting. Mr. Bauman also stated in that telephone conversation that the family contacted him. That's even more interesting. You gotta wonder why the Riches, a few weeks after their son is murdered, living in Omaha, Nebraska, a relatively modest folks that they are would contact a high-powered Washington DC PR firm that handles high-powered Democratic politicians and union labor leaders one of them named Hillary Clinton you gotta wonder why the riches would contact a PR person to help them with media you would think they would contact somebody in Omaha or someone else why they would contact Mr. Bauman who just happens to have formerly worked for the SEIU and is deeply connected to the Clintons, Podesta, the Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Party, and the whole nine yards. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> I would love for someone to ask Mr. and Mrs. Rich if they, if it was their decision to contact Mr. Bauman. I'm pretty sure they'll say it wasn't, um, unless they had some coaching Maybe someone advised them to contact Mr. Bauman, but I'm pretty sure the riches didn't pick up the yellow pages uh, in D.C. or view the online yellow pages to find a PR firm in D.C. to represent them. Seems they would do that in their hometown. Not really sure why they would need a PR representative. They seem to be doing fine on their own. So that was a very interesting phone call with Mr. Bauman. Um, but... Uh, he sounded uh, kind of whacked out to me and like he was kind of nervous. So I think Mr. Bauman is a liar, basically. And uh, I think he's very nervous because I think he, like a lot of other people, they caught up, get caught up in the shenanigans of people like the Clintons, the DNC, and uh, all their corrupt friends sometimes find themselves involved in something they wish they were not involved in. And that sounds to me like the position Mr. Bauman is in. <clears throat> this is not your typical PR job that he's used to. So he's probably getting a life lesson like many of those other people who associated with the Clintons who are now either dead or in prison or died in prison, if you know what I mean. So let's get to reality winner. You know, the story broke about two days ago and I initially when a story breaks the first 24 hours just you get so much disinformation everybody's speculating it takes about 24 hours for anything to really shake itself out to where you can separate the facts that were incorrect from the facts that are correct and then you can start looking around plus I really wanted to dig into reality winner myself and do a little background on her and find out who she might be connected to whether she is connected to the DNC, the SEIU, the Clintons, Podesta, you know, uh, Wasserman Schultz, or any of these people. But now that we've had about 48 hours and I've done a little bit of background on Reality Winner, 
uh, I have uh, come to the conclusion that I don't really believe she is connected to any of this stuff as far as the Clintons and anything like that. I believe this is really, she is an isolated case and that she was acting on her own and uh, it does appear that she was a social justice warrior based on a lot of her comments and tweets that I've read and reviewed in the past 24 hours. It appears she was a big time Bernie Sanders fan, which means she probably was not a Hillary Clinton fan. <clears throat> but it appears that she was acting on her own. There's a few questions that I have, which is namely how she was able to get or maintain. I know how she got the security clearance that she got. She was in the Air Force as a linguist and so she probably did some sort of uh, intel work in the Air Force. She probably had at least a moderately high clearance in the Air Force and so it was probably pretty easy to get her a secret clearance. But it surprises me a little bit that she was able to maintain her clearance based on some of the um, comments that she made, particularly one comment where she said that she would side with the Iranian president over President Trump. She's a real Trump hater, by the way. <laughs> she called him a, well, I won't say the word, but she called him the C word and also um, made other vulgar references to Donald Trump. So she clearly hated Trump. And what she was doing, obviously, is that she was jumping into the political fray, trying to do her part by advancing the Russia-Trump narrative, by leaking some intel, um, <clears throat> which was an NASA, NSA analysis of the Russians hacking the election, and they had some evidence that suggested that the Russians may have been running a phishing program um, relating to the voting machines, which as we know, the voting machines are not online, so that wouldn't have helped. None of this was really proven. It was simply an investigation and there was no actual finding. So there was really no smoking gun or nothing there, certainly not worth uh, the price that she is now going to pay because her career is essentially ruined and she could be facing up to 10 years in prison. Um, basically what she did, she passed an NSA analysis of an alleged Russian hacking to the Intercept. Now the Intercept, in case you didn't know, <laughs> has very deep connections to the deep state. They, they are not WikiLeaks, okay? If you if you leak to WikiLeaks, Assange will, will protect your identity. If you leak to the Intercept or give them information, they probably will immediately pick up the phone and call the CIA <laughs> and say, we got one. So I actually have believed for a long time that the Intercept is actually run probably by the CIA or probably has cahoots. They uh, are the same people who dropped the dime on John Kirikow and ended up, uh, he ended up going to prison. He was also a um, former intelligence official who was trying to be a whistleblower and of course it didn't work out for him when he put his trust in the Intercept. If you put your trust in the Intercept, they will screw you every time. I believe they're part of the deep state. So that's what she did. <clears throat> she did hold a top secret clearance while she was working at this firm called uh, Pluribus International Corporation. She speaks three Farsi, three different languages of Farsi, uh, which explains why she was a linguist and why she would be valuable to an to a international a uh, company like Pl Pluribus International that does intel work for intelligence agencies, most notably the CIA and the NSA. And it didn't take them long to find her because, again, this is another reason why I don't believe that she was working in cahoots with anybody because what she did and the, actually the way she did it was very Bush League. Um, she certainly was receiving no help from anyone who would know how to avoid detection because everything that she did was essentially signing her name all over it. Leaking it, first of all, to the Intercept <laughs> is a bad idea. Secondly, uh, she, she printed it from her own office, which means that they can go back and look at the uh, dot matrix and determine where, where that printer uh, is. 
and then that tells them how many people would have access to that printer. In this case, it was six, and so they were able to narrow it down, I understand, within five hours of the uh, intelligence agency that noted this story on Intercept, assuming Intercept didn't call them on the phone, but they monitor Intercept. The CIA, they probably have multiple people monitoring the Intercept full time. Uh, if you leak something to the Intercept, the CIA is going to be on it in minutes. So regardless of whether the Intercept contacted them or whether they just saw it through their normal uh, 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 habit of monitoring the Intercept, it only took them five hours to determine uh, to narrow it down to six people who may have been the person who leaked this information and uh, once they were able to look at the, the the dot pattern on the printer they were able to figure this out it didn't take them long to sniff it out and then of course once they served the search warrant apparently uh, reality winner uh, instead of doing what she probably should have done which is kept her mouth shut and waited for an attorney she apparently spoke openly with them didn't really care about an attorney and admitted to everything not only that, she she communicated directly with The Intercept and one other uh, publication using her own personal email. <laughs> so clearly this woman was not a professional. She was not being guided by professionals, probably not a plant by the Obama administration or anything like that. That was my first thought, that she was either one of these uh, Obama holdovers that was planted somewhere. But, you know, she worked for a private contractor, and something that a lot of people don't realize is that even though the intelligence community is massive with 16 agencies uh, employing millions of people, the exact number we don't know, but these are people that work directly for these intelligence agencies, but these intelligence agencies all use large private contracting firms. Uh, Edward Snowden was working for Booz Allen so he was working for a private contractor so a lot of this intel the actual data mining that's done a lot of the actual you know legwork that is done is actually done by private corporations um, and she worked for one of these private uh, intel corporations that that's associated with uh, defense uh, the defense agencies the defense intelligence agency the department of defense the central intelligence agency the nsa all these uh, government organizations uh, uh, work with many private contracting firms. The largest is probably Booz Allen, uh, which is where Snowden worked. So, um, so anyway, this is pretty much what I have come to believe about Reality Winner, is that um, she was just a very angry Bernie Sanders supporter um, who despises Donald Trump who thought that she could help advance the uh, political narrative of the Trump-Russia thing. She gained access to some information, which she could because she had the clearance to do it, and the company she, she worked for uh, was able to access these programs. She was able to download this information and pass it on to The Intercept, her first mistake. Um, and um, so I think she was working alone. Um, and uh, I don't think she has any connections. We may find out something more in the future. There are some people suggesting she had connections to CNN because she had a signed photo from uh, What's-His-Face, uh, the, uh, the gay uh, news host with the gray hair, uh, whatever his name is, the uh, grandson of the Vanderbilt family, former CIA himself, whatever his name is, Anderson uh, Cooper. Yeah, Anderson Cooper. So she had a signed photo of Anderson Cooper and a lot of people are trying to suggest that she may have had some sort of connection to CNN. Uh, I was not able to find anything like that. I don't think she ever worked for them or anything like that. She may have emailed them things or what have you. I know she posted a couple comments on, uh, she follows uh, what's his name on Facebook or whatever, but no, I don't think she's connected to anything or anybody. Again, what she did was so amateurish, so Bush League that, um, you know, you would think that she would know that leaking something like that, printing it right from her own office on their equipment, and then contacting the people she's going to send it to on her own personal phone is probably not not a good idea if you're trying to remain anonymous. She basically put out a huge uh, flashing billboard sign, hey, I'm the leaker. That's why it only took them five hours to, tr to uh, determine who the leaker was and find her. So, uh, she made a big mistake and uh, she'll likely be facing some charges 
for removing classified material from a facility, from a government facility, even though she didn't work for the government. Uh, when you're a government contractor, you can be charged as if you are working for the government because you're working for a contractor of the government. And I worked with a lot of these people when I was in the military myself. Uh, I'm very surprised that she was able to get a top secret clearance, or not so much get it, but maintain it with some of the comments that she was making. <clears throat> uh, they usually take those kinds of things pretty seriously. So um, anyhow, I just think she's a lone wolf acting on her own, and uh, she obviously made a big error because what she leaked um, was no smoking gun. I mean, if she would have leaked something, that would have been really big news, but it really wasn't. The actual documents that she released or leaked only state that there was an investigation of this possible hacking using a phishing program, but there was no finding uh, in it and nothing to connect uh, this uh, fishing expedition to Trump or the Trump campaign or anything like that. So really, I mean, she accomplished nothing really uh, in the grand scheme of things, but she could now be looking at 10 years in prison. Excuse me. <clears throat> Next up, about a week ago, I did a video where I told you about Dennis Montgomery, another former contractor. He worked as a contractor for both the NSA and the CIA. His name is Dennis Montgomery. Dennis Montgomery uh, has now retained Larry Clayman as his attorney, and they have filed a lawsuit, which has already made its way through the first round, and, and we have determined now that the case will be heard. It will be heard by a judge who Larry Clayman claims is a good judge. He's ruled on favorably in other situations of NSA spying and surveillance and things like that in the past. So he definitely understands this type of law, and he has uh, been involved in these cases before. Mr. Clayman is pretty happy with this uh, judge that uh, is going to be ruling on this case. Circa News picked up on this story. Sarah Carter is primarily covering this. And basically the long and short of it is, is that when Mr. Montgomery walked out of the CIA and the NSA with 600 million pages of classified documents on 47 hard drives, he sat on that information for a while. Um, then he decided to kind of leak this information, I guess you would say. But then uh, he determined, I guess after watching Edward Snowden, that that may not be the way to go. So he decided the best thing to do would be to follow the path that most whistleblowers follow, which was to go to the uh, Justice Department or to the U.S. attorneys and present them with evidence that he had proving that there was massive amounts of illegal surveillance, gross violations of the Fourth Amendment going on, and he had the proof of it. Now, he was in a sticky situation because he walked out the door with 47 hard drives worth of proof, worth of evidence. So he was guilty of a crime. So this is where Larry Clayman has been helping him out, and now they have been able to secure for Mr. Montgomery immunity from U.S. attorneys. So now that he was granted immunity from the U.S. attorneys, he was able to now move forward with this case. And his case is essentially he is suing James Comey and the FBI because he was told uh, in the three meetings that he had with U.S. attorneys, the first was like a sit-down discussion about immunity, the second was him bringing in, promising to bring in every single bit of data that he stole, and then he did a follow-up interview again with Larry Klayman, uh where he wanted to know how they would proceed. And he was promised, he was promised that James Comey would investigate this, but since James Comey never did investigate this, he has decided to go legal. It has been reported, as I told you in the last video from Larry Clayman, that these 47 hard drives are sitting in 
and have been sitting in James Comey's office, proving that over 20 million people were surveilled illegally, including judges, politicians, private citizens, and including Donald Trump. All of this illegal surveilling, uh, surveillance, and a lot of this, most of this, people were completely unmasked, and the conversations had nothing to do with foreign intelligence. And this apparently was uh, programs that were being run by the CIA who were using the NSA database in order to do these programs. And the two CIA directors who would have been uh, at the CIA when most of this went down was uh, actually probably three. Uh, we know for sure John Brennan. We know our good friend Michael Hayden who's now trying to make a quick move to Ireland. And prior to him, uh, Bush's CIA director, uh, who served in his first term. So uh, anyhow, we could be going back uh, quite a few years um, for this surveillance. <clears throat> but it appears now that Mr. Montgomery is very upset that the promise that was made to him by U.S. attorneys that these uh, that these 47 hard drives would be turned over to James Comey at the CIA and that he would uh, investigate it and prosecute the crimes. Now we know if there's 47 hard drives, 600 million pages of unmasked conversations of private citizens, uh, calls in the U.S. having nothing to do with intelligence, uh, we can assume that there's a lot of crime going on here, violations of the Fourth Amendment, violations of the FISA Act, violations of just about everything you can think of, including the CIA is not even supposed to be involved in domestic spying. Not at all. They're a foreign intelligence agency. So, this is what we have, and it now appears that this lawsuit is going to go forward, so Mr. Comey may want to uh, get himself a lawyer, because he is about to be sued. They filed the paperwork in federal court on Monday morning. I imagine James Comey will be getting his legal papers served to him sometime in the next couple of days, and he will have to explain in a real courtroom, not in a congressional hearing, but in an actual courtroom, he is going to have to explain why he, he is, uh, why he set on 47 hard drives worth of data proving gross violations of the Fourth Amendment gross violations of the FISA Act, why he did not act on these. You see, as FBI director, he's obligated to at very least investigate and then prosecute crimes. But then again, he had no problem letting Hillary Clinton sliver off the hook, did he? Of course not, even though he laid out the case for massive mishandling of thousands and thousands of pieces of classified information information, including seven or 22 SAP programs, programs so secret the government doesn't even admit they exist. James Comey didn't follow up and prosecute on that. Uh, so why should we expect him to follow up, investigate, or prosecute anyone for spying on 10% of the U.S. population, unmasking their names, and all the rest? So James Comey uh, unfortunately is not going away. Uh, but I think James Comey may be finding himself on the other side of the uh, investigative process as we move forward. Instead of being a witness, he may find himself being the subject of investigations and possibly the criminal defendant. In this case, he would be the criminal defendant because the lawsuit is filed against James Comey personally and the FBI uh, for failing to carry out his duties as the FBI director, knowingly covering up and obstructing justice. That's what he did. If the FBI director knew and had the evidence that these crimes had been committed and he chose not to, especially when we're talking about all this surveillance, here's James Comey going in front of the Congress acting as if he doesn't know anything about all of this spying and unmasking that's going on when he's got 47 hard drives sitting in his office with the physical proof, with the actual unmasked conversations of Trump personally, his team, his family, his friends, 
everyone around him, plus 20 million other Americans. Could be you. Could be me. Probably is me. <laughs> I'm sure John Baynard had me put on the list. <laughs> you know, my mom would always warn me, you better be careful. Yes, I know. So, anyhow, uh, this is pretty much the news of the day. I, I, um, I think it'll be interesting to watch how this moves forward. Uh, Comey testifies on Thursday. I imagine it's going to be a sleeper. Although, I imagine Comey will try to get some digs in. I mean, Trump did fire him and then say he was a crazy guy and a nut and all these other things. I'm sure Comey's got his feelings hurt. Certainly, he would like to get back at Trump a little bit. But he's got to be very careful because, again, as I said, Comey and these intelligence heads, they're all in a minefield. Every single one of them are walking in a minefield. And uh, they really don't know what, what they, when they say something, they don't know what other information is out there that may come forward in the future that may contradict something they're saying now. So I imagine that it is like a minefield. If you're James Comey or Clapper or Brennan or any of these people, Rice or any of these people, uh, that's why they're, they're not too eager to answer questions. That's why they dance around. That's why they can't give direct answers and they won't comment on a lot of things. It's simply because they know there's a lot of unknowns and they don't know what's going to come out and they have to be very careful because they might entrap themselves. But uh, James Comey is going to have a lot of issues for years to come because so much of what happened uh, under his leadership at the, at the FBI is so in question. Everything from, you know, I mean, let's look at all the investigations that happened during his tenure. Uh, we had the Fast and Furious, which, of course, Obama uh, used executive privilege to whip, to be able to uh, not have to subpoena, produce documents that were subpoenaed by the Congress. Comey and, and the Attorney General should have taken it out of the hands of the Congress and pursued it through the Justice Department and criminal court. They did not. We had the IRS uh, situation. Uh, no prosecutions there. We had the Hillary Clinton email scandal. No prosecutions there. We had the Clinton Foundation, clear uh, quid pro quo and pay for play. Comey couldn't find anything there. Uh, we had all the leaking. Uh, the uh, James Comey couldn't find anything there, couldn't produce any of the leakers. And again, when we talk about these leakers, the reason I focus so much on the Flynn and the Russian ambassador so much is that that came from signal intelligence. There's not that many people that could have leaked that to the to the media. That should have been sniffed out in a couple of weeks at the most. Comey could only be, along with the intelligence sets, could, could only be covering somebody, uh, maybe themselves. I find it very difficult to believe that you can't sniff out someone who would have leaked something like that. I mean, that's, you know, that's just hard to believe. I think if you put me in charge of the FBI, I'd find the person who leaked that Flynn phone call with the Russian ambassador in about 48 hours. I'd probably have the, have the person or persons who were involved in the physical leaking and probably some other folks who uh, know about it. We also have the classified dossier, the entire dossier, all 35 pages, which was only in the hands of the intelligence agency and the FBI somehow finding its way to BuzzFeed. I would have tracked that down too. Now I think that they will, since we learned from the video two days ago that they have now got FISA warrants to surveil uh, the journalist who received classified information. I've been wondering why they haven't done this a long time ago. They can go back and review the communications and find out who these journalists were talking to. And if someone's name from the intelligence community or from the Obama administration pops up, maybe Samantha Power, maybe Susan Rice, or one of their minions, someone working for them, probably communicating as a go-between, I think it's a matter of time they'll sniff this one out now that they're actually trying. And once we get a new FBI director, I'm sure that we'll see a lot of things uh, happening that have not been happening under Comey. Certainly the 47 hard drives that are sitting in his office may now finally be reviewed. They are going to be reviewed in a court, a criminal court, 
with James Comey as the defendant. So this is what we have going on for today, Towergate, day 95. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's just drip, 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 isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, so anyway, we'll keep following all these things, and I'm sure in due time we'll uh, get somewhere near the bottom of this and find out uh, if anybody will actually be held accountable for it. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your comments. Uh, appreciate it. You guys have a good night. Bye.